Hi, my name is Sam Gikandi and I'm the CEO at Africa Stocking. I think we first started talking about Africa Stocking in 2007 with my co-founder Eston. Um, and at the time, basically Obama was running for president and we wanted to, and there were a lot of positive stories coming out about the continent. We basically wanted to create a message board where people could just talk about Africa and, and, and share positive stories about it. Then in 2010, given the success of the tech industry and the iHub, uh, so we decided to incorporate a company called Africa Stocking um, so that we could start taking advantage of the digital revolution. And since then it's truly really just been an evolution of uh, ideas uh, constantly uh, iterating on the business model to find which problem is actually the biggest problem to solve. So I was born in Kenya, actually from a village. Um, so I, I, used, I used to pick tea when I was there. Um, so there's two leaves and a bud, and I, that's not how I got introduced. But uh, I think after high school, I, I did this course um, at Strathmore, where they were teaching programming. Um, so learned some visual basic. Uh, I, I didn't really care much for it at the time. Uh, then I, I got into MIT. Uh, so when I went to MIT, that's where I got this uh, drinking from a fire hose introduction to programming. Um, so started by learning languages like Lisp, Scheme, uh, learning Java, PHP, um, and I've been coding ever since. So I've been coding for the last uh, 17 years, I would say, uh, since 2001. Um, and, you know, have worked in uh, different projects, in startups. I have worked in, in the financial industry across the world. So I've worked in the US, uh, written code in Asia, in Hong Kong. Um, and then I've been writing code for Africa Stocking for the last six years. Um, so leading the engineering effort as well as running the company. The person that really kept this going was my co-founder. He's, I think he's the one that really has that uh, knack for uh, breaking new ground and, um, and staying with it even when, when the going is tough. Um, so having that person that you're working with where you can, you can actually help each other along uh, was very important in the early days. First three years I don't actually think we made any money. We, we didn't pay ourselves any salaries for three years. Um, so thankfully we had some savings and I was actually working full time so that actually helped the idea keep growing. Just having that person or those people around you that um, you know even when when things are not looking up uh, when you're almost about to shut down the business they're like no let's let's go for another you know another two months another one month um, yeah and, and hopefully over time you actually find that problem that people are willing to pay for. Scaling for us has come with focus but I really felt comfortable scaling the company when when I when I thought that we had found the one problem that we wanted to solve um, and, and the one customer segment that we were targeting. Um, so initially we were actually, we were kind of all over the place. We were looking at e-commerce, we were looking at um, end, end customer solutions for SMS. Um, and then we finally uh, settled on building an API for developers. And even in the early days, we were really thinking about the product side of it, which is the SMS, USSD voice. Um, but then when we actually shifted that focus and started really focusing on our customers who turned out to be developers Developers. Um, I think that's where we really found that thread that, uh, that we now felt was sufficient enough to create a big vision around it. That's been our focus since 2015. Um, so really that's when we started going to new markets. So we've expanded to uh, about 10 markets since then. Um, 10 going on 20, I always say that because we, we're aggressively getting into new markets. And we feel confident that we're scaling along the right parameters. Um, sometimes you scale, but when you get into a new market, if you don't really know what your focus is, it's hard for you to reason around who should I talk to first, uh, which connections do I need, who should I hire, um, what should my business development process look like. Uh, but since we found that focus, it's actually been quite straightforward for us to now get into new markets. This is our chance to actually change our lives. Um, you know, we have someone here who says, Graham says, but uh, we can change Africa in our lifetimes. Um, I think that's possible, especially now because this is actually a different revolution that's happening. The fourth industrial revolution, but this is driven by technology that's widely available, that's widely accessible. Um, so that technology is all on GitHub, it's open source, it's free. Um, so we can actually use this technology to create new industries and to transform uh, how consumers access services, how we serve consumers, how different things happen on the continent. And we actually don't need anyone else to come in and, and do it for us. Uh, we can do it ourselves. 
Um, so with the other revolutions, you needed like coal, you needed you know heavy equipment, machinery, infrastructure. Here you just need a laptop and access to the internet. Um, so I think it's a very unique moment. Um, and for me, uh, what will really make or break this is how how good of a workforce can we bring to, to solve these problems? Uh, so what's the quality of developers that we will have solving these problems? Because if the best developers are not in Africa, we're going to be left behind. The best developers are building WhatsApp in Silicon Valley and WeChat in China. We're just going to be consumers. But if we can actually have the best developers building in Africa, um, it won't be long before they're building for Africa uh, and before we're actually exporting these solutions and, and actually now generating massive amounts of wealth. Uh, for ourselves. So I think it's a big challenge um, and for me it's exciting to be kind of in the, in the middle of that. Culture for me is, is what makes the company. I think what we've done is really build a company that works for the people that work there instead of the other way around. So, so it's really about creating an environment where people can come in and, and, and be themselves um, and then constantly challenge them. Uh, so, so build, create that vision that, that's bigger than all of us. Um, so we're not here to sell, we're here to actually uh, help Africa uh, become a better version of itself. We're here to help build fantastic ecosystems. Um, so really thinking about that and then making sure that people understand that that's actually what we're here to do. Um, that's a very powerful motivator for, for people um, and actually starts breaking a lot of the ice and, and creating an environment where people can express themselves um, and an environment where they can grow and, and be chill. Um, and then also like having dreadlocks I think helps. So <laughs> because I, I know people that come in and when the moment they see that the CEO has dreadlocks, they just calm down, they're like, okay, I think, I think it's gonna be all right. When I think about it, um, so when, when I started in 2012, I didn't have dreadlocks. Uh, I, I don't think the company really knew what we wanted to do. So I started growing dreadlocks in 2014. Um, and that's when we started figuring out, okay, so maybe we need to find a focus. Um, and I think for two years, I, I, I looked like, you know, people are wondering what's going on. Are these twists, are they dreadlocks? Uh, everyone was very concerned. Um, so I, I think it was very si symbolic of what we were going through with the team. Um, and then eventually, of course, uh, as dreadlocks do, they start becoming great. Um, and you know, I think right now they, you know, they actually they have a lot more structure, a lot more form. Um, and yeah, and I always see that as, and, and I refuse to cut them. So like, once I think once we once we decided we we're going after developers, we refuse to compromise on that. And, and I think that's quite quite symbolic of um, you know the way the dreadlocks have gone. So yeah, so we we bootstrapped for a long time, and you know, and I think that was important because. It really helped us come to the point where we knew what we wanted to scale. Um, so I, 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 we tried to raise money uh, maybe three, four years ago, and another time we didn't really know what we wanted to scale. Um, so at the point where we got to the, the the place where we were like, okay, so this is what we need to scale. Um, that's when we started looking for partners that we thought understood Africa uh, and that could really help us now build this Pan-African company. What we really want to build is that call it an operating system, which allows developers to plug in and build ideas that can scale to all the 56 countries on the continent. We want to have a reason to get into every country on the continent and create an environment where if you build something for market A, you can go to any other market on the continent and engage with consumers using the most locally relevant solutions. Um, so it's a journey that we've started on this year. Um, so we got the funding this year. Um, and part of that now is to actually expand our footprint, get into more markets. Um, and by doing that, we actually need to increase the range of products that we have. So we're gonna be developing new products. We're gonna be bringing things like cloud, IoT, analytics, um, real-time messaging, uh, video to the market. Uh, we're also going to be obviously scaling up our operations in Nairobi, uh, building more capacity to support this expansion. Um, yeah, and finally, we'll be setting aside some money for the studio. Um, so the studio is this space where we are encouraging developers to come and co-create value with us. Not just developers, but actually any founders that want to create value for the African continent can actually come into the studio. And it's, it's kind of like a safe space. Um, where you can come in and then we can help you think about your business model from a tech perspective and see how we can create value together and take it across the continent. Um, so we currently have about 10 companies uh, that we're working with in the studio um, and the idea is to really understand that business model and see how it, it can help Africa's talking expand across the continent but then also create value for people that join that community and that um, you know are looking for funding or are looking for technical partners that can help them scale or are looking to just become better engineers um, or are looking to solve 
more and more problems using engineering. And for us, the end result of this is really the talent. Um, so we want to create a place where people can quickly iterate through different ideas, through different companies, pick up the skills that are required so that the companies that they build in four, five, ten years are world-beating companies because we, we then have that uh, shared experience, uh, those shared resources and that exposure that means that we can execute at a very high level. What really stands out is just how we are actually a product of uh, the circumstances uh, that, that we live in um, and just how we've been able to really internalize what's happening and, and create value uh, in, in that moment. Um, for example, we did a hackathon at USIU uh, in 2015 um, and it just felt like the right thing to do. Um, but I can tell you that from that one hackathon, uh, about five of the the senior engineers at AT actually came from that one hackathon. Uh, our international expansion league came from that hackathon. Um, but it was just that one, you know, one night where you go there and you're like, it feels right to go to engage these young people and, um, and, and think about technology. But then in hindsight, people are like, wow, that was genius, like going, recruiting through hackathons. Um, and it is really just that. It's, you know, the way we get into Nigeria, the way we get into new markets, uh, the way we reason around products. Um, it's just really, you know, looking at the circumstances and trying to come up with the most optimal way of, uh, of, of moving forward. And, and that's the life of an engineer. Um, you know, I, I really think that having an engineering background has really helped me um, deal with complexity, deal with scale, deal with um, strategy, deal with uh, just decision making in general, um, and, and, and get comfortable with building a company that's actually quite complicated.